Hello. Morning. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, we're going to leap right in, I think, today. Um, we could sit here and chat for five minutes but because we work um, with oh. quick things. Uh, we, we try and stick to 30 minutes. Um, welcome back. Today, it's me, Chloe Lorch, and we've got Melinda here. We're going to have a um, very relaxed, very open conversation today about how in 2024 it feels very much like a um, little bit walking in concrete boots for a lot of photographers, a lot of creatives. Uh, you know, the world is is getting tighter in terms of financial resources and uh you know those extra things on top are not as free flowing really um and um melinda mentioned that she has been having conversations with a few photographers who have been finding things slower than usual in fact slower than maybe ever for some of them um and we are here today we're going to have a quick chat about that gap and that gap of how we can be busy following our flow building our confidence building our craft you know working with our client base often repeat clients and then all of a sudden there's a drop off and then we begin to question whether we should still be doing it whether we um yeah, lots of things really. So um, we'll just kick off. Um, so Melinda, how are you think? How are you finding things at the moment? Um, personally, so it's I'm in that situation at the moment. So when I decided to, I suppose, monetize um, photography. And I also added VA work, which then turned into mentoring work. So that was two years ago. Mm. Um, I pretty much booked out straight away. And in saying that, I was still working part-time at the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and so I did mentoring and photography for 12 months, as well as work four days a week. And then I dropped down to two days a week at the hospital and was doing mentoring and photography as well um, for another 12 months. And then last year I was like, right, I've done two years. Um, I feel like it's been this natural progression now of, you know, going from four days a week to two days a week. And I've taken now um, four months off of the hospital Mm -hmm. to completely devote to my business and um it was like as soon as I made that decision everything stopped so I've not made a single cent this year um which as I was saying to someone yesterday it is terrifying but it's also, I feel, a really great lesson for me in really refining what I offer, um, how I offer it. Uh, it has very much highlighted to me mindset yeah, and how we think of things, how we look at things, our perspective on things, or my perspective on things. Um, and in in this period, I feel like I've been more creative because I feel like, you know, I think we've mentioned this before actually in another episode about when everything's going really well, you just kind of cruise along and you're quite comfortable and, you you know, you keep doing the things that you do and you, you kind of know that that works. Mm. Whereas when it feels like, nothing's going away or mm. you don't feel successful or um you know you have this vision in mind and it's not happening as quick as you like 
then we get cre- more creative. Mm. And I, I at this point, um, you know, am doing the Women Over Forty project, which is free. Which um, I think I've done. I think I've done sixteen now. Mm. Um, and the feedback's been incredible. It's been worldwide. Uh, the project has proven that women are looking for that, for that connection, for that recognition, for that reflection, um, to be seen, to be heard. And the uh, feedback from what I've been doing, it does, like, it does increase women's confidence. It does give her insight into herself because I send out a questionnaire before. And I've, as I've said to all the ladies, the questionnaire is not for me. Like it kind of helps helps me in the session in how I take photos and mm. what the women are comfortable with. But it's more the insight for themselves. Yeah. And that's the same with mentoring. Um, it's like, well, that can feel like a luxury as well. It's like, do I do I really need mentoring? I can read a book or I can, you know, I have a mm. community around me. Whereas if you have that one-on-one, is it going to help you? Is it, you know, how far can you push yourself in those uh, conversations in bringing that mindset back to the why, what am I creating for, why am I doing it, why am I going to stick it out, you know, why am I offering my art for money and is, you know, or does the, the mentoring sessions kind of, move the needle in your business Mm. Uh, yeah so it has these last three months have shown to me where I need to refine where I need to get my messaging clearer um where I need to you know to show my audience and the people that ideal client that I would like to work with um how I can help yeah and it for me business is very much personal development it's really knowing who you are in your business um really building that trust in yourself to stick it out Mm. so that you can you know be that valuable person um because people are handing their money over Mm. And so for me, I've been, you know, I've started a project. I've been writing a lot more. I do my newsletter once a week, doing the podcast. And I always sort of come back to, as women, we're the ultimate creators. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if we're creating a business, a photo, a meal, a family, a home. We're always creating anyway. Yeah. And so when it is a bit slower, Perhaps, you know, what I've been doing is kind of taking the pressure off uh, like my business and concentrating on really like looking after myself, moving, like doing extra exercise to move that frustrated energy, Um, you know, perhaps asking myself bigger, deeper questions of why, because I'm all about why I'm like, why isn't it working? What's the gap? What's the, you know, what does work? What hasn't worked? Um, and, you know, bridging that gap of, well, this is what I want and this mm. is why I want it, but this is where I am at the moment. And so what needs to happen? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think... For for me, uh, so for me, the bigger why is I don't want to go back to a job, Mm. you know, because I worked in a job, I, you know, where you're told, you've given your roster, I worked, um, you know, every Christmas, every Easter, all of that. So my bigger why and my fire behind what I what I am creating 
um, is very set in stone. So I kind of have that North Star of this is why I keep going. This is why I keep finding other things to create, um, you know, like the podcast, like the project, um, you know, different writing so that I can have those like small successes Hmm. so that you're, you do these things and you're like, I'm proud of that. Yeah. And it sort of builds up and it becomes your body of work. Hmm. Yeah. I guess one thing that I've really realized in terms of with all my relocations and all my restarts um and particularly right now where i am um it's so important to know why we do what we do and so important to dig into that and it keeps us going and it keeps us um pushing through the hard parts and all of that side of it but and i know that you're speaking about working with women um i guess the one part for me that is and it might be the case potentially with um with with some photographers who are struggling is it's really drilling down on who your client is and yep. what what how you're serving them yep. and um yes i agree um women need like there's a desire and it almost a need for a lot of women particularly over 40 to feel seen and validated and um understand our strength and embrace that um but it's really with the monetary transaction of a business uh the thing that i really am so hyper aware of now in my business that i wasn't maybe um i don't know maybe eight years ago um you know i was in that space of i i have got to the point of being able to take beautiful pictures um putting myself out there you know this is who i am this is why i do it this is what i can do um but there's such a an array now there are so many choices there are so many ways that people can take their own photos um you know you've got ai coming in that i don't think people are really the general public are really using yet for photography but it's there um it's really narrowing down that acute to the acute point of and i'm not talking i know um there's a perception about and and a discussion and lots of photographers talk about your ideal client mm. i don't agree with that ideal client no yeah. <laughs> like no. i'm here in the yep. middle of nowhere i can't suddenly you know build this vision of an ideal client because again you know the multi dimensional yep. offerings and things that are here but it's really that group that core group and you know i look at my um i was actually looking at it this morning i look at my instagram numbers and and actually for the first time and i guess potentially because i I'm beginning to carve out a, a, a strong niche for myself in the fact that, um, you know, there are a variety of things that I'm doing that it's, it is incomparable just because I'm doing it in my own unique way. But um, I look at my number and actually it's for the first time ever in my time on Instagram is I don't even like, it doesn't even make a difference yeah. now. It doesn't make a difference because it's about the individuals that you're connecting to and the and those um and not just through social media. Yeah. Um exactly. and I definitely feel that one of the things that is absolutely critical and because I have um and I've mentioned this before, I have pivoted yep. ever since I started becoming an intentional photographer, you know, so I trained in Paris I started a business in Paris we knew we weren't going to stay in France so then I pivoted when I went to Malaysia and I pivoted again I pivoted again I pivoted again and then I got sick and then I had children and you know I haven't stopped pivoting yep. um and I know that um 
COVID um, shook a percentage of creatives up because all of a sudden they couldn't go and do the in-person that they were doing before. But actually, um, you know, there's a, there's a, maybe a lot of people are talking about it, but I don't get the, the sense that, you know, we've gone from how we were pandemic, post pandemic, and then now obviously um, not only the post pandemic, but the amplification of certain world events that are happening um it's massively affected everything and and i think there are a number of potential businesses that are still trying to work the same way and yet they're not investing the time to really understand how those how those changes uh are really affecting um the bigger picture yeah i actually um, it's slightly different, but I, because I since opening my studio and people coming in, um, I'm getting more people asking me to help them with photography, like cameras and things like that, obviously, because I have now a space that I'm accessible to. <laughs> and, um, you know, a couple of people have asked me, this lady who's local, and she said to me she wanted to, she wanted to stop taking pictures with her phone. She wanted to get a camera because she loves photography and she wants to take pictures of her kids, but she doesn't like being on her phone because she doesn't like see her kids seeing her on the phone. Yeah. And she wants to have this kind of like baby entry level camera, um, you know, and um, so she's more intentional on taking the photographs, but she doesn't want to spend, um, you know, a DSLR price. OK, she said, what is on the market? What would you suggest? And I was like, well, actually, I don't know, because I've sat in that, mar uh, you know, professional yeah. market for over a decade I you know and I said I'll have a look so I did some research and there's literally almost you know there's very very little in that point and shoot bracket anymore yeah. um there are some but it's like you can either spend maybe three four hundred dollars on something which is really kind of snap happy or then you jump up to DSLR range yeah. and I believe it's because phones sit in that middle range because phones are now so amazing at taking photographs and you can even get you can even change on some I was um shooting with a, a friend of mine who's also an influencer and I was shooting with her the other day and she has two phones she has her regular phone and she has her um influencer phone and basically it has uh, capabilities to change you can change shutter speed and aperture yeah. and all that stuff and that is the market. And when I was down in our local town, which is an hour away, it's our biggest, closest, biggest town to where I live. I wanted to get, um, I actually wanted to get one of those strappy, like double oh, yeah, yeah. harnesses because I was shooting a wedding. But obviously I was like, you know, never going to get one in Omaru, but you never know. So I went into, um, uh, where did I go into? Noel Leeming, which I don't know whether you have over there, but it's a, um, tech shop of household appliances and phones and whatever and they used to have cameras and I walked in and I was looking around and I also needed a new uh an extra sim card um uh memory card just in case and so I was walking around and I said you don't have any cameras and he's like no we don't sell cameras anymore wow and I said is there a camera shop in town and they were like there's no camera shop in town oh wow yeah and he said, so, so he said, I can sell you a memory card, but I can't sell you anything. I sell you a decent phone that will take great pictures, but there is no camera. And I was like, I, for me, it was such a re realization of how much yeah. our photography industry has shifted in the last, yeah. um, probably, well, in the last however many years, 20, 30 years, but how much in the last even probably five years yeah. is, um, you know, and particularly in the last couple, well, you know, we've got COVID was a massive one because people at home, they were taking more pictures, they had more time, you know, um, but then also, you know, but they're traveling more. There's so many shifts, so many shifts. Um, and, and phones are a massive part of that. And that I think is really this knock-on effect for photographers in terms of really our market has shifted considerably yeah and yet 
excuse me, no, not many people are talking about it. Not many people at there. They're kind of like, shit, things aren't, aren't, they're not like they were. I'm not, you know, uh, 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 uh. it's like, okay, so are you still spending all your time marketing online on social media? Are you connecting in person? Are you yeah. collaborating with other photographers or even not even photographers, but other businesses? I think about you. I remember when I was in the Middle East and I was super keen on um, doing some beautiful. I actually had a vision of doing female portraits, but really stunning fine art ones, which, you know, would be um, printed. Not saying that your work isn't, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. but, you know, like art pieces that yeah. you would print big on a wall and I actually got talking to she, she wasn't a therapist I can't maybe it was a personal trainer it was either a therapist or a personal trainer but all of a sudden you know in that midst of that those connections of where where money is being spent in terms of um empowerment or or coaching or um you know, uh, focusing on fitness and health, all of those, there are so many things that are sort of happening in that sphere that actually photography, no, I've just remembered what it was <laughs> now. My brain, sorry. I know what it was now. It was actually, I wanted, I was doing couple sessions. <laughs> and it was actually a couple therapist that I was talking to. <laughs> My God. But actually the other one's relevant as well. But it was actually, I've just remembered now, I started doing couple shoots and um, and it was in that moment where I was talking to this lady who's a couple therapist and I said, it's really incredible because that time, it's it wasn't the photos, it wasn't me being there, it wasn't the beautiful, it was the, like the date, you know, it was like taking that time out and it's the same with what you're doing. It's, it is about, it is about the photos, but actually it's not. It's like you say, it's more about the questionnaire. It's more about the taking the time, allocating the time, slowing down, all of those things. And I think one of the things is, you know, often we talk in photography about process and we talk about, but it is just that. It's not, it's not just a word we use. It is just that. It's that, it's that raising up that time spent and those connections made and those considering ourselves and our feelings at a higher level in that yeah. time, which then has that ripple effect. Mm -hmm. And that's really where, you know, we, as we talked about before you came on, before we started recording and um, you said you had these conversations, you know, I would, I would be asking these photographers, um, you know, maybe it is time that you do something else maybe but if it's not and photography is what you want to be doing how are you connecting in person how are you building it around a, a sense a lifestyle you know you buy um you go and buy a soft drink and, or you see a soft drink ad and actually it's so little about the actual drink it's all yeah. about everything else and I think that's another thing about photography. Um, um, and one, you know, one thing I always tell myself, I have, I have a number of different whys as to my, the reason I do what I do. But actually, at the end of the day, for clients, for the people that are paying the money and for the people that you're providing a service to, yeah. there, there are so many other, it's really about flipping it a yeah. little bit and going, okay, so the market has shifted. Well, how has it shifted? And how has it shifted where I live? Mm. Because photography, I know what you're doing is remote. Um, but, um, you know, for a lot of photographers, it's, it's, and as I said, for me, it's so acute because I literally, solo mum, two children. I, I do have friends that can help me out, but there's a small town. So actually getting childcare is really hard. Yeah. Um, there are only 400 people. A lot of those would potentially not be able to, or, you know, wouldn't invest in photography. I have to be so ground down as to what I'm offering, how I'm offering it. And yet, you know, I'm working on that minute scale. And yet I'm also working with 
you know, global companies as well. So I sort of sit in that gap at the moment of where am I actually sitting? Yeah. But I think um, it's that real business side and the acute side of going, um, you know, is this working? Why is this not working? Why, yeah. why the people that I was selling to, what are they doing? Are they going somewhere else? Hmm. Are they um, not having photo ph photographs? If their families have their children grown up, um, you know, it's uh, it's really so much more. And um, and also for some people, it could be a time. Uh, I opened my studio last year at a time when I couldn't shoot that well because yeah. I because I had my knee problem. Um, and that was the time where there was an allowance for something else. And it really, I, I believe as well, it's really about how open you are. Yes. How open you are to your business evolving. Yeah. A and lot different of opportunities. Opportunities. And I totally understand. A lot for, if you're a formulaic photographer, if you have a set the way that you've always done it, and if, you ha if you've made a lot of money or if you've had a great success at it and it's been working, it's actually really hard to go, okay, well, I'm going to be open to the shifting yeah. because, you know, you're like, I, but I love what I was doing and I was yeah. making money and why the heck should I change it? Because, and why aren't people buying what I was doing? Mm. Because life changes and things mm. move on and technology moves on and people move on and um, general, general populist feeling moves on. Um, yeah. And I think that that's, that's where. Uh, that's where I would suggest for those who potentially might be listening, who might be, uh, you know, feeling that um, it's become really hard is to try, like you said earlier on, to try and understand what that hard looks like and mm. which which bits are hard. Is mm. it because... You know, your energy shifted because generally we're all feeling stretched. We're all feeling this kind of race of life. We're all, you know, I, I you know, it's this, this over, over, um, simu uh, stimulated, stimulated, <laughs> stimulated, not stimulated, stimulated world with noise and sound and options and. Mm. Um, and being able to tune down into what actually works for you um, yeah. in that time, in your what you have access to, who you connect to, who you exactly. want to spend time with, who yeah. you want to be creating for. Mm. Um, all of those things, there are like a million questions that I would have mm. um, and real, no real reason. Um, well, lots of reasons why you could get stuck, but there are there are ways to think round it. Yeah. Um, it's exactly what I'm going to be doing in my masterclass, actually, is that it's, you know, I'm not going to, there are will be ways that I'll be sitting there and, you know, sharing the way I do things, but there will be so much of this. Mm. There'll be so much of this. Um, and I'm hoping to have a business coach. Ooh, I'm hoping to have a business coach be, uh, come and speak. Um, yep. we, I still need to confirm a few things, but because because you can't be a master at something if you're not considering all the facets. Yeah. Um, and the fact that all those facets change. Exactly. All those, they shift. We're like diamonds in the light, right? You know, the light, we have this facet here that we do this, and we have this facet here and this and here. And as the light moves, it changes and everything mm -hmm. changes. And it's constantly changing. Mm -hmm. And the world's constantly changing. And yep. um, there's there's really that open... Um, it's about how open you are. Yeah, um, and it doesn't have to be doom and gloom. No. Like there's so much opportunity and like I was saying before, it's if you just shift your perspective of, okay, so it's not working. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Try something else. Yeah. Get, get creative. Yeah. The model you've got at the moment isn't working. Mm. Well, you know, sit down and really – have those conversations with yourself of okay so what do I need to what do I need to change how do I yeah. need to what model do I need to now have a go at experiment yeah. be creative 
like you said, you're just marketing on Instagram. Yeah. You know, and if you are, like you said, have a look at the people that follow you. Are they really, are they really your audience? Yeah. Um, numbers, numbers never truly translate into dollars. They just don't. Mm. They don't. Um, yeah. And the thing is as well is that you look at any business and they're always asking their customer. They're always asking for feedback. Um, you know, I mean, Instagram is a prime example of that. It, it, it tweaks its, you know, platform one way and then it doesn't work. So it pulls it back or it tweaks it again. Um, and I think it's that, that constant tweaking. And, it, and when, you're a, when you're a solo entrepreneur and you're doing all the things, and might, you might even be a mom as well or a parent, um, you know, you're constantly tweaking everything else in your life. Mm. And to then feel, you know, that you then have to tweak something that was working that's yep. now not, it, yep. it feels so overwhelming. Mm. Um, and I guess I, because I've, I've, as I said earlier, I have tweaked constantly even now every I feel like every <laughs> who was I oh I was talking to a couple of people at the end of last year um about I can't even think that it was photography related but it was like oh well I did okay this year and I'm hoping to do the same again next year and I'm like it's so weird it's so alien for me like, honestly <laughs> it's so alien for me because um I have no two years, no six months, no even probably month yeah. is comparable. Yeah. Like, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I have a few um, lovely people in the community are saying, oh, you know, how's your studio going? Are you, is it as you expected? I was like, I had no expectations. Yes. Yes. Because I've never done it before. It's never been done. Like, it's, you know, yes, obviously studios have been, I I have no expectations. I have nothing to... I can't say, yes, well, I'm making this amount of money every month. And that's what yep. I was hoping to. So, yes, it's this. It. I've got no idea. I yep. am busier and I have more work, which now means that I can't be there so, at the moment. So it's like this whole flip, 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 flip. I've got, like, yep. really? It's, it's, um, it's, that's where I'm kind of at. Like, I'm looking at it as I have been, like, I've worked for 20 something years to have the opportunity now to take that time off yeah yeah and just explore and have fun with it like yeah if my business doesn't pick up again or doesn't grow or whatever then that's I'm kind of okay with that as well yeah like I don't know like I'm having so much fun with the project with writing and the podcast and and it's just kind of exploring and seeing mm. what happens. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like with your studio, you kind of never know where these opportunities are going to pop up. No. But, but you have to be so you have to be open to seeing them. Yeah. And not kind of bogged down in like, like I could be really – kind of cranky with myself because I'm like well it worked for two years I was working my ass off at the hospital in my business I was like making money at both yeah making money at both literally yeah. like overflowing with yeah. like you know I would pack my morning full yeah have lunch and then go and do an eight-hour shift at the hospital I could be cranky that that's not happening now but mm. I'm supremely supremely grateful that I have time now yeah yeah like I have all day mm. and then I'm at home with my family at night I have weekends off and I'm getting teary now because I've never had that yeah I've never been home this much I've never had a decent sleep schedule I've never mm. you know like and I'm just I'm loving that mm. and yeah it's a concern that I don't have clients in my business but I don't know, is it? Like I'm not I'm not stressed about it. Yeah, and that's that's a great position to be in as well. Cuz I'm like um, what else is what else is out there? Yeah. What else? Like oh, you know, I'm sort of plodding along with all my little projects or whatever. And all of them are teaching me things as well. Yeah. And so I you know, it's 
it's important to be in the present and see what's working now. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, things change. Yeah, they do. And it's, yeah, they it's do. The, and it, the and it's really, it's really also sort of falls onto the fact of, um, you know, if you can make money in other ways or how much is it supporting your family and, um, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. Um, and, and I think also one of the things that I've learned and it's still, it's really, really hard, but I, it's, it's trying not to panic. Yeah. Yes. Don't because panic. particularly with social media, it's so easy to start appearing desperate. Um, and it's really, and I think that's what, um, that's what, because I'm a verbal processor, that's what my studio has done for me, is enabled me to have conversations with people, even for people that would never buy into, not like invest into what I'm doing, whether it's a print or whether it's a session but I'm having conversations with them anyway about my work and about what photography means to them. And so it opens up thoughts in my mind. It sows seeds in my mind. It enables me to verbally process what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and how I can serve other people and how, you know, and so therefore then you get into this place of abundance because you're yes. overflowing with ideas. Yes. Um, and then you don't have any time, which is sort of where a little bit where I'm at right now. But um, it's it's the keep staying open in terms of having those conversations and finding key people to be able to talk to, which is where you fit in, which is where I fit in, um, it, you know, enabling. And that just builds an, a lovely ecosystem yeah. for your business anyway. Like that's yeah. that's marketing. Yeah. That's literal marketing. Yeah. Like they it's might networking. not anything. Yeah, but you don't know who they know, who they're no. going to talk to, no. who they'll recommend to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's just comes back to businesses being human. Yeah, and that's what social media has. Although it's connected us to more people, it's disconnected us to the key people. Yeah, that we actually need to be talking to. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very it's generalized us. Yes. Yeah. It has. It has. And it's made us very um, you know, where all this comparison comes in because you see people doing things online and they seemingly look successful or, you know, and then you start comparing, but you don't know what they're doing behind the scenes. No. You don't know who they're talking to behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is where the in-person conversations really become so key. Yeah. And they're just, I don't, the in-person conversations are so, they're so much more potent and there's so much more energy mm. and just Nuance. flow and ideas yeah. and thoughts and yeah. 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 And it makes yeah. such a difference. And, I, and it's the energy transferal as well. Yeah, definitely. Because I, I, I spent way more time talking to people, uh, partly because I have my my studio, and I, it's like I've put my art in a place where, uh, not well, my art, my photography, what I can do, it's put it in within reach. Yes. And therefore, I've become within reach. And therefore, sessions with with me have become within reach. Yes. And and it's that um, I was talking to someone else the other day, someone the other day, and they're like, you need to put your puzzles, I've got puzzles, like you need to put it at the front of the shop so they come in and they pick it up. And then once they're picking it up, they, they start forming this, you know, physical Connection. bond with it and they're less yeah. likely to put it down and not buy it. Yeah. And it's the same thing with photography. But because what we do is a service and then what we – deliver is intangible until we make it tangible which is why I make my books and and so there's actually it's so reliant on the relationship that we have with those individuals 
yeah to be able for them to be able to still hold on to it and not put it down exactly you know if we're on our social media all the time pictures tiny pictures on the phone people can connect to it for a very short amount of time and then they put the phone down yeah and then they put the phone down or they scroll there's nothing for them to physically hold on to or emotionally hold on to and that's that's the fundamental and that's the key question that i would probably ask anyone that's struggling in their business right now Mm. is what are you giving your clients to emotionally and tangibly hold on to to then transfer them into buying into what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Because as humans, we want that connection. We need it, mm. especially with so much on offer now and yeah. so much to spend our money on and so much that we need to like pay for. Yeah. We need it. We need it and we crave it. And I know mm. I crave it. And I'm yeah. particularly, and I think it's so heightened for me because I am, you know, I am living a solo life at the moment. I am craving it like unreal because, mm. but so that I'm channeling that into my business. Yeah. Um, and that I, it's actually, it's actually becoming a really powerful part of what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, as I said, anybody that I would encourage to really kind of slow down and really think about that. And it's, we can get so caught up in ourselves as artists and go, well, why am I doing that? Can't yeah. Actually, at the end of the day, they do care about it. And I know, you know, Simon Sinek talks about the why, which is so, so important. Yep. But, and that, that energy, and that's what fuels us and what, like, that is the aura that we give out with our work. But it's not necessarily what people are picking up. No. It's like, and that's the thing. It's like, so that's the gap that we need to mentally adjust our thinking to is to, Go, okay, so this is me and this is the client. Yes. Um, and this is what they're seeing and what they're feeling, but what are they emotionally attaching to, which will then innate will then say, Okay, well, next month I have X, Y, and Z, but I'm gonna allocate five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars to that thing because that thing is emotionally in here and I can't yeah. let it go. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's up to us to translate our our why yeah into something that some the our you know audience yeah our client can relate recognizes to. yeah because if they don't recognize themselves or you know people now have more access to you and that just means that they can feel that connection with you yeah. before they they buy your product or your service yeah and then they want to support you or they're like, oh, you know, I love her art, but I also love her. Yeah. Or, you know, they can picture you taking their photo. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's that beautiful opportunity to have that human connection. And then, you know, your why is behind that, but then it's translated into art because the, that client has recognized themselves in that. Yeah. Exactly. And it, it is hard on social media if you're just on social media trying to sort of stand out above the noise. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's become, like, it kind of went to the point from, you know, I I trained in 2010 and Facebook was just starting then business facebook business pages were the core thing and then instagram became the next thing Mm. and then it became that was how you built your business that was how and facebook for probably 20 2011 to 2013 20 yes 2011 to 2013 was when the facebook was how i built my business and then probably 2013 um (laughs) instagram has never really it has but it's but the thing now is yep. that it, um, because it's exploded so much, yep. it's now actually only a part. It's only a small part. It's a bit like, you know, you have, you know, for ages before even social media, was like, I'm a published photographer. I've had my photograph in this magazine and this magazine and this article and blah, blah, blah. And therefore you are then, you know, elevated. elevated. Um, I actually was looking, we're running really over time, but yeah. there, um I actually met a gorgeous couple recently and they were talking about a photographer who's their work that they want to buy and an individual photograph 
is worth, uh, David Yarrow is worth £30,000 <laughs> for a limited edition one photograph. And I was looking at his work and I, you know, I was like, so now I'm trying to understand how that works. Yeah. And it's largely due to over, he was, I believe, I'm probably going to get this all wrong. Um, he took this photo, famous photograph of Maradona, and then he got, and then he did um, the Olympics and he did a variety of, and he was for um, the Times and a few like key pinnacle and then and he shoots amazing images of animals and now sells limited editions like one of ten. Yeah. Um so the value, you know, tiny, 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 um has um you know, elevated. And yeah. then, you know, and that's the thing that I I look now at um social media and why potentially we're it's really hard to get now an Annie Leibovitz, uh David Bailey, uh David Yarrow, uh, you know, because because we're all we're all sitting in this generalist bracket. Yeah. And 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 we're so afraid to go above, above, above. And it's almost like, you know, we don't know anymore how or we're losing that ability to know what holds the value because yes. so many things are so out of whack in terms of value with the influencers and things like that it's like where where do we sit now because um is it who we're photographing is it where we've been published is it how many followers we have is it and we are, we it's like we're lost we're yes. lost we're a generation of creators who have sort of lost that track yeah. Um. And we're now probably leading into another conversation, but I think I think that that is also where we kind of get stuck, and we're like, but I was doing this, and it was working, and now it's not working, and it's actually so overwhelming to try and even consider where else I fit or how else I can pivot and how else I can adjust. And unless you're, um, you know, narrowed down, which is where you know likes of you and I can help, is to narrow it down and go, okay, well, where are you? Yes. You know, in terms of location, in terms of your age, in terms of your access, in terms of your interests, in terms of your why, and just go narrow, narrow. Um, yeah. um, and it's about knowing yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And be knowing. Honest. You have to yeah. be honest with yourself. Yes. I did this wedding and lots of people are like, oh, do you do lots of weddings? I was like, no, I've done like 30 in my whole career. I could do weddings. I could probably make a really good living out of weddings. But I would be burnt out. I would never see my kids. I don't yeah. even know how I would make it work with yeah. being a solo parent. I just don't know. Yeah. Um, I would have to travel and, you know, I can do it. Yes, I can do it. But does it mean I should do it? Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah it's And that just comes back to... If you're given the opportunity and it works for you at the time, yeah, then you do it because you know you can do it and they know you can do it. Yeah, But you don't have to just, as you said, go, oh, I've done a wedding. I know I can do it. So now that's I'm just going to build everything around that. Yeah. Well, I could. And you if could. I built everything around, then I would actually miss out on all these other opportunities, exactly. which I love. Yeah. And actually for me, selfishly, that's more of what it's about really yeah. is it, it's you know because to be a wedding photographer it is so much about you know um sharing pictures of shoes and getting <laughs> all into that side of things uh, i'm three years away from two and a half years away from 50 and i'm not socializing with people that are getting married i'm not that interested in fashion <laughs> i like there are lots of things that kind of like yeah. go ah oh. yeah. um but yeah we should probably wrap up. Yes, <laughs> it's been like nearly an hour. Maybe the Harry Hardcores are still listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I suppose it just comes back to be kind to yourself, be open, trust, and you know, mm. just experiment. Yeah, be consistent, do the work, stay just stay build, open, stay open, build mm. up. You know, just keep. Keep going. If yeah. you love, if you love what you're doing, if you love taking photographs, if and if it is a slow period, don't stop taking photos. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Just keep working. Yeah, 
I think maybe next week we could talk about personal projects because that's a massive part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 And I'm having I'm I'm having a great time with mine. I love it. Yeah. Love we it. haven't talked about it yet, on have we? No. Okay. <laughs> thank you for listening. If you've got yeah, any thoughts you, or questions, yeah. If you're still <laughs> listening. <laughs> do uh, message us we're here to help um yeah. melinda and i both mentor and um and actually offer um you know shorter conversational packages so even if it's a real boost that you need or a unsticking point um do get in touch with us because we are very open to different types of conversations and we are we are very experienced and we have been through a lot of different um ebbs and flows and environments so do get in touch and um thank you and do share if there's anyone that you know that is getting really stuck in their business at the moment and getting really down about it do feel free to share it and i hope it helps them otherwise we'll See you next week. See you next week. Thank you. Bye.